The opportunity to work in the Batman universe is a real privilege. There's a huge level of expectation. You want to create something that stands up with all of this other great fiction and Batman lore that's been told over the years. It was such a great concept of Batman being victimized by all the characters. And the potential for conflict was limitless. You will die. I think the stakes are much higher here. Joker has a lot less to lose. He was sick in the head before, but now his body is sick as well. I've just had a horrible thought. We could both actually die here tonight. The whole series is kind of like living in this crazy dark world where you don't really know who's really a good guy anyway. You must show you are willing to take a life. It's got a really fantastic, gritty flavor to it. This game is totally badass. Writing a story for a game is completely different, I think, to writing a story for a, a film. We're regularly writing hourly crescendos in our story to keep people playing, to keep them interested. And then obviously the long-term story arc, you know, Batman's poisoned, what's gonna happen, he's dying, Joker's dying, where's this going? If you wanted to be cured so badly, you only had to ask. <laughs> The great thing about Batman's Rogues Gallery is that everyone's a bit different. Everyone's out for their own end, and all those things they're trying to achieve are slightly different. Bring out the defenders! <laughs> what got us excited is what if you have this huge district of Gotham and then you put all of these supervillains into it. That was where the genesis of the story was. You will regret what you did, Mr. Cobblepot. To tell a classic complex Batman story in this huge open world we created is obviously a bit of a problem because you know we never know where the player's going to go. One of our solutions was to develop the surveillance system so that at any point you can listen into conversations that are happening live around you. There are lots of these kind of story elements that we are constantly drip feeding you throughout the game. They're all talking about events that you have witnessed or seen or been part of. What the hell happened? Don't know. Gas leak? In a church rooftop? A gas leak? No way. We'll write a ton of stories around the main story because we want to make sure that everything's consistent. So we go in and we'll write a story about Penguin. How did he get there? What was he doing before he came to Arkham City? Where does he go after Arkham City? And we'll do that for every character. Oh. We always thought Penguin was going to be in you know, a hard character to put in our game, you know, because traditionally, you know, he's this little guy, monocle, top hat, which, you know, looks great drawn, but when we put him in 3D, it just wouldn't have worked. <laughs> our very first conversation on Penguin was, you know, we should make him this kind of cockney gangster. And then I think I joked, we should shove a bottle in his eye for the, for the monocle. And uh, I don't know if it was Jim or someone from DC, it straight away went, yeah, that's awesome, let's do that. And you know, it's that kind of relationship that really helps us take these characters and push them to new places. Are you gonna be a good boy and give up nicely? You're not giving orders here anymore, Cobblepot. Anyone who's finished um, Arkham City will know that you know, it doesn't end well for Harley Quinn. And you know, she's now got a bit of an axe to grind with Batman. Surprise, B-Man! With the DLC, it's enabling us to tell the story of Harley Quinn's revenge that follows shortly after the events of Arkham City. The player actually switches roles between Batman and Robin, the two kind of working cooperatively. You're late, Batman. Late, late, late. We spent so long working on the mechanics, working on how to tell stories, building the characters, you know, building this playground. We could almost be more ambitious and create a storyline that ties up loose ends and really makes sense in our universe.